to talk a little bit about some of the things you're going to experience this week in Barb Raveling's Weight Loss Bible Study on days three and four, because we're taking kind of two each week, but there might be, next week we might only take one. I'm not really sure yet. But anyway, um, day three, she calls justification eating. And I personally think that justification eating is one of the biggest reasons that we eat outside of our zero to five boundaries. If we can just nip this in the bud, I think that a whole lot of our eating outside of our boundaries would be stopped because I think a lot of our eating outside of zero to five starts with justification. Of course, it kind of makes sense. Um, we would experience a whole lot more success in doing this. So, so what we need to do is probably renew our minds about a number of things that we think might justify eating outside of zero to five. If you saw my, vi my uh, listen to my audio last Wednesday, um, I actually recorded myself having this battle, this internal battle with justification eating in my car while I was in an adjoining town 45 minutes away and there was a drive through calling my name. Um, if you didn't get a chance to hear that yet, uh, go back to Wednesday's, um, the date would have been the 6th. Go back to the 6th and listen to the second post I, um, I put on the blog that day and you'll see my struggle and how I what I decided to do with that as well as the results. I, I posted the results afterwards. Anyway, that was a, a, an example of justification eating, but I, I uh, emerged victorious, which is a good thing. Yay! Um, anyway, the more I work on breaking bad habits, uh, Barb says, the more she realizes how deceitful her mind is. And that is really why we need to renew our minds. Our minds are deceitful. We may think the zero to five thing makes it so simple. Well, it is simple, but it's not easy because our minds are deceitful. The scripture says as much. And we, um, as Barb says, we rarely come right out and say, I'm going to break my boundary right now. We rarely say that. Instead, we kind of lie to ourselves and justify it in, by doing so. So she makes um, a, a list of lies that we tell ourselves. Now, what I want to do is add a caveat, a warning, a watch out. There's one in particular that I don't want to trigger any of us back into our old dieting mentality uh, challenges. Um, if you see anything in Barb's material that talks about dieting or calories or points, I want to challenge you to don't go down that road of thinking about calories, but instead capture those thoughts, renew your mind. You don't need to do the calories or the points or whatever. We're talking zero to five is our primary boundary. So for instance, the lies we tell ourselves, Barb says um, in number three, one lie that she has told herself, this is only 200 calories when it's really 245 calories. The lie that you and I might be more prone to tell ourselves as faithful thin withiners is well, I'm at a zero, wink, wink. I'm just sure I'm at a zero. After all, it was four hours ago when I had my last meal. It doesn't matter that I ate too much <laughs> or whatever it might be. And so that might be a lie that we tell ourselves. Um, or we might tell ourselves a lie that um, it doesn't matter if I eat now because I'll be at a zero in an hour anyway. Okay, I want to caution us. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to bend and flex. And sometimes those bendings and flexings of our boundaries can be led by God. And I will give you examples of those later on in our study when God led me to bend and flex my boundary. But for now, I want to encourage you, unless you know that God has led you to bend and flex with your boundaries, be on the lookout and consider that a red flag, that you may be lying to yourself. Your heart is deceitful. Our, my heart is deceitful. Okay, so change any wording that you see in Barb's material in your mind. Change the wording from calories or points to something that fits for the approach that you and I have decided to embrace. Um, you're going to notice that um, she makes references to boundaries a lot, and that is wonderful. I'm so glad for this material because I've been saying for a long time, it's really all about boundaries, and if I'm going to live according to them, or not. You know, and that yellow line down the center of the highway is a boundary. At any point in time, anybody could choose to violate that boundary and we'd have a head-on collision. Uh, another boundary, we, we just kind of, we kind of know better than to do this, and it's a law besides, is when I'm in a, in a shop, a store of some sort, I don't just pick up what I want and put it in my purse or in my backpack and walk out with it without paying for it. I adhere to those boundaries 
I'm willing to abide by those boundaries, the yellow line down the center of the road and the, the not not paying for something. I wouldn't I wouldn't violate paying for something thing before uh, taking it out of the store. So let's look at the boundary of zero to five in the same way. So I love that Barb is focusing us on this is about boundaries. And so we need to renew our mind about boundaries and how we think about boundaries. Simply, um, I guess I would summarize some of the thought about boundaries this way. Do I really think that I can live without a boundary relative to food and eating in this area of my life? What has history shown me? And do I really think that I can trust myself that, no, nope, now I don't really need the boundary. Right now is okay for me not to use my boundary. Okay, history tells me that that's not going to work for me. Okay, so day three, talking about justification eating, um, does a really good job of having us look at that and how justification can kind of whittle away at our boundaries. Um, as an intro to Barb's day four um, on indulgent eating, she talks about an experience that she had being on a dance team. And I would wager that many of us have had similar experiences, maybe not on a dance team per se, but where physical size and appearance, especially regarding weight, was made of supreme value and importance in the eyes of an authority figure in our lives, maybe as young children or as young teens. Um, and this can cause us to have some real deep-seated challenges with regard to what, how we value that now. And that is something we're going to have to renew our minds about. Do you believe that your size determines your value? Do you believe that God looks upon your size? And either with favor or without favor. Um, ask God to show you if the thoughts that you have about being a certain size, whether it's large or small, thin or heavy, muscular or flabby, whatever, ask him to show you, do these thoughts that I have, God, pass the Philippians 4-8 test? Noble, good, true, excellent, praiseworthy, etc. Barb talks about truth journaling this week in her day four. And uh, I don't want you to worry about truth journaling just yet. It's something that she mentions and teaches about in her Freedom from Emotional Eating Bible study. But I'm going to be posting a video um, that shows you how I approach truth journaling, um, I think on Wednesday of this week. So be watching for that. Um, I don't want you to worry about truth journaling just yet because you may not be familiar with that. Or you can search Barb's blog um, at barbraveling.com for her teaching um, that she may have there on truth journaling. But I'm going to hopefully give you a really clear, concise um, information about what it means to truth journal and how you might use it. Anyway, this week I want you to work through day three questions on justification eating and the journaling activities, looking up those passages. And day four at Barb's um, website, um, the free Bible study, weight loss Bible study on indulgent eating. Um, work through her questions, look up the Bible verses, and ask God to show you his truth. What is his truth about this? And God, would you show me what I believe that doesn't line up with your truth, with what you want me to believe about this? And then begin to capture those thoughts that you have that aren't in alignment with his thoughts. Reject those thoughts that are well in alignment with his and embrace his thoughts. Think his thoughts after him about justification, about indulgent eating, about thinness or heaviness. Begin to just piece it apart. Yes, you have a renewing of the mind goal and that remains throughout this study. Keep working on that single thing unless God leads you to change it or to add to it. But in addition to that, you'll catch on Along the way, you'll catch, um, you'll catch yourself thinking things that you know aren't God's thoughts. And use that as an opportunity, even on the fly, like I did last Wednesday. Um, whoa, you know, this isn't from God. What is a thought about this that is from God that I could think instead? We want to trade what we're thinking. The lie for the truth. My fleshly thoughts for God's godly spiritual thoughts. All right, so that's your assignment this week, day three and day four. Post to the blog to get in, um, your name put into the drawing this week. You get to choose between a Thin Within book, a Hunger Within book, or an hour of coaching. Um, yeah, have a great week.